All right, I know you guys want to get 400 horsepower out of your Q50 3.7. So this is the video for you guys. Hit the intro. Welcome everybody back to Boost Emotion, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. Welcome back, welcome back everybody. So let's talk today about how to get 400 horsepower out of your Q50 3.7. Now some of these modifications may apply for the 3.7 G37 and 370Z, but because most of my father is Q50 guys, and I used to own a 3.7 Q50 also, and you guys complain I give too much VR30 content, this video is for you guys. So once again, if you're watching, hit the like button. Let's go, let's continue, let's get into it. Now guys, as a warning, I want to say is this. There's a few prerequisites that you're going to have to understand before I say it at the end of the video. Number one, these modifications that I talk about in this video will vary depending on the tuner because you're going to need to get your car tuned at the end once you put all these bolt-ons on, okay? And this horsepower rating isn't to the ground. So we're not talking about 400 wheel horsepower, we're talking about 400 horsepower to the crank. You guys are not gonna get more than 340, not even probably 350 to the wheel um, unless you go force induction. That's either you add a power added such as supercharger or turbocharger or even nitrous. So this is pretty much a video for people who are full bolt on, regular fuel, no power adders, that's it, let's go. Number one. That would be test pipes, guys. So, test pipes are pretty much you, your way of decatting the car. Uh, all cars come with catalytic converters from factory. These catalytic converters clean up the exhaust so that you can put less carbon footprint in the air. Go green, save the earth. But also, it reduces the power of your engine. So think about it like this, the motor is a pump. It sucks in air and it also blows out. But if something's in a way like a catalytic converter material, you reduce the amount of power and efficiency of this motor. So when you go with these test pipes now, you don't have that restriction anymore. So I, I gotta say test pipes is one of the best bang for its bucks because you can get them for almost as cheap as $100 and they can go all the way up to about $800, $900 depending on the price you choose to pay, okay? Um, all the links will be below to everything I'm speaking about in this video because everything I'm speaking about is what I would actually purchase for my car if it was right here, right now, 3.7. Now there will be some uh, cons when it comes to getting test pipes. Number one, you're gonna run into a check engine light in, within the next 100 miles, 100 or at least cycle. Um, reason being is you decat the car and unless you're getting it tuned at which you gotta get it tuned, then you can remove the check engine light. So that's just one way of the car is just saying something's wrong, what's going on here? And guess what? You decat the car. Um, number two, you may run into some noises. Um, some of the noise you're gonna start to hear is bees in a can noise. It's It sucks. It's annoying, it's just the exhaust pulses going into the metal pipe. Uh, it also, you may start hearing it even when you add a white pipe too, but you're gonna start hearing it. And some people actually don't like to hear that bees in the cans noise. So for some of the people that's watching, I already know you guys are gonna jump in and say, well, Boost, what if I don't want to test pipes? I also know I can go, I also heard I can go with high flow cats and I don't have to deal with the bees in the, 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 bees in the can noise and I may not have to run into check engine lights. Yes, that is actually another option within the test pipe spectrum. This is still a cat catalyst converter that you have in your car now but it's just a different cell count, which it just flows a lot easier and a lot better. So I'll also put the links to that below, but usually uh, high flow catalyst converters are a lot more expensive, almost three to four times expensive. Yes, you can also install them on your car and you may not run into any check engine lights. Some people still had run into some check engine lights. Maybe it was an installation error, but you can still go with those. You may get, you'll get a lot less reduced um, bees in the can noise and it's a lot easier to drive around without dealing with check engine lights until you get tuned. Some of you guys are gonna ask right now, so what is the difference between high flow cats and test pipes when it comes to power? Based on all the dynos I've seen in the last 10 to 15 years, guys, um, we're talking about three to five wheel horsepower difference here. I know we want every penny out of it, but we're talking about three to five wheel horsepower difference between test pipes and high flow cats, all depending on the tuner. So if you guys really want to pay the extra money, but then get robbed 
three to five wheels power, you can. It's up to you. So let's move on to number two, and that would be a cat back exhaust. Um, guys are gonna jump in and sit there and say, well, I wanna get the $500 exhaust or the $3,000 exhaust. I'm gonna say it right now on video. You can spend all the money you want on this cat back exhaust. The gains are gonna be minimal between the brand. It's just, just the brand. Th think about the piping size, okay? I'm not saying bigger is always better, but 2.5 inch and bigger usually will have the best amount of gains. Reason being is, once you go with a, a wider diameter exhaust, this gets the exhaust, based on the exhaust pulses in the scavenging event, uh, that you can get all this exhaust out fast as possible before it starts to cool off. Because yes, technically you can still lose power if you still have a restrictive exhaust or if the exhaust isn't designed to flow properly. This could happen. But at the end of the day, you guys know I'm still a cheap channel and I still like to perform, I, I'm a little old to do, I still like to get the exhaust that sounds decently. But I'll put some links below to some of the cat back exhausts I would choose to purchase. Not just one, but one or two that I may enjoy and you guys can definitely check it out. Um, also on top of that, uh, I gotta say the cons is, not all ex uh, cat back exhausts are created equal. They're all gonna have a different noise. So some are gonna be very quiet and some are gonna sound like straight pipe 3.7s. I don't think you guys like that. But uh, at the end of the day, definitely look into an exhaust that you like and definitely check it out. So let's move on to number three. Now that would be intakes. Now I enjoy intakes, I, I feel bad. Here's why I gotta say what I say. Because I've always recommended getting this brand Takeda Intakes because it has an enclosed um, a filter that's pretty much as a stock design and it goes off the OEM system. Reason being is, guys, the 3.7s you guys want the coolest amount of air to get into the throttle into the motor. Reason being is, any hot air reduces the power. All the other intakes on the market are all open air, air, uh, engine bay filters, which means that the fans turn on and it cools off the engine and you guys are sucking in hot air. You're losing performance by doing so. I mean, when the car is moving at highway speed, it's a lot different, but day-to-day -day, day -day traffic, yes. The pro is you get to hear the intake noise, but the con is the car is actually sucking in a lot more hot air than cool air. This is why I always recommend getting Takeda intakes. That's my recommendation. You won't hear as much intake noise, but you get the coolest amount of temperature because it goes off the front engine shroud. Okay, so definitely check out the link below to that one. Now, uh, there's a few companies out here, but I'm gonna p primarily talk about um, Z1 Motorsports. Um, and this, they also do a intake manifold swap. If you have the VHR and if you have the VHR and higher, you have a slightly different intake manifold than the the V the. Phew, doc, I, oh my God, I forgot the HR um, 3.5. The, the intake manifolds are damn near the same look, but the ones from the 3.5 HR flow better than the V the VQ uh, HR, a uh, VHR. So yeah, this is mad scientist stuff they did back in the day. Somebody was just playing with stuff and found this out. So this is so great that everything's done for us already. Um, now this can actually be a still expensive piece. Um, it's about $600. Uh, also, this is not a promotional video for them, but at the end of the day, this is, they're one of the companies that can make it. The other company I believe is Motodyne, but that's guys, that's if you wanna go with them, but I, I would still recommend Z1 Motorsports because they're still rocking with us. They're still making a lot of products for us. But this intake manifold just flows better at higher RPM and you will gain continued wheel horsepower throughout the RPM range. For you guys who are gonna jump in and say, how much wheel horsepower is this? We're talking about five to 10 here. We're talking about minimal gains. It ain't gonna be something extraordinary. It's gonna be small gains depending on how the tuner tunes your car. But when all this stuff is added up, the car can breathe and excel more efficiently. Now, there is a few other companies I may just throw in here real quick. Um, there are also larger throttle bodies that's on the market. I think they're $700, $800 EPS throttle bodies. Uh, pretty much they have a bigger board, bigger opening. So usually we have a bigger board, big opening. Guess what? More air could get sucked in. So if you guys want to purchase that, it's an expensive piece. You can definitely look into getting that also. So we already talked about intakes. We already talked about throttle bodies. We also talked about the intake manifold. And we also talked about um, test pipe slash half oak cats and cat back exhaust. We're actually finishing off this with one last thing. Technically, it is headers. 
Um, what I gotta say is this. At this current moment, from what I know, there's really no company that make headers that can clear. Now, I'm not saying that people haven't got this done on their um, 3.7 Q50, but you may have to do a little bit of cutting, banging, just to get the headers to fit. Because, yes, other headers actually fit from the G37, 370Z. They bolt on, but we have the Q50 has stuff in the way that stuff just not going to be able to line up, and that's it. You can't get it installed. So, yes, I would love for you guys to put uh, headers on your Q50 because, you know, you guys want to get the most out of your car. Um, I'm going to still sit there and say this. I still believe that getting headers on this car, I don't see the cost benefit of trying to even get it because it just, to me, doesn't make any sense. Even though different exhaust manifolds from the Q50 3.7 to the G37 to the 370Z are actually, they actually flow a little differently comparing the sizes and everything, but... I don't see the added expense and headache. Some of these headers could cost what five, six hundred dollars, up to a, a little over a thousand, just to. And you're gonna spend another three, four hundred dollars to install it for what? Another five, maybe almost. We hope eight to ten wheel horsepower, but five to eight. I don't see the sense in this. It's a really expensive uh, price to pay just to try to get headers, at least on the Q50, and to see if it even fits. But you guys can continue to do your due diligence and see if there's other Q50 owners who have these um who have headers on the market. But definitely, I'll put links below to what I can find, and uh, you guys just check it out. So otherwise than that, let's just put this all together in a nutshell. So now that we talked about all the bolt-ons for this car, I don't want you guys to start sitting here thinking, well, you gotta add up the horsepower, the three, five, the five, the ten, the twenty horsepower, and this is gonna make my car. 600 horsepower no that's just not how it works pretty much i'm telling you guys right now if you're on 93 fuel and you get the mo the modifications that i stated you will on a dyno you're going to dyno tune depending on the da depending on the weather outside and humidity and everything and your elevation you're going to dyno between maybe the lowest 310 to the wheel and probably up to the highest of 340 maybe 350 probably not 350 but like 3 40 to the wheel and that will give you a 400 horsepower car because you've got to take you have to also uh, Calculate the drivetrain loss remember we we have a drivetrain loss the, the motor has to still put the power through transmission drive shaft and Axles and tires that you lose the car robs a lot of power there. So yes guys um, That is the 400 horsepower package and once everything is said and done, yes, if you go with a really good tuner, always recommend that results may vary. There's plenty of tuners out there for the 3.7. I'm not gonna name any in this video because there's just too many to count from. You probably have a local tuner who could probably tune your car on either Uprev. I believe you can turn on either Uprev or East U Tech. Those are the two uh, tuning platforms that I remember right now for the 3.7 Q50s. So definitely check it out. If you enjoyed this video, guys, definitely hit the like button with the subscribe button and the bell notification. If you want to support me and support the channel, Teespring account below, buy this merch. Uh, also on top of that, if you want to uh, contact me, Boost Motion IG, Boost Motion on Facebook, and Boost Motion at gmail.com. Guys, otherwise than that, you guys have a good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. To all my subscribers, my followers, my supporters, I appreciate you guys so much. You have a good day. Hit the outro. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost Motion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.